I'm Iona Walters, Senior Solutions Consultant with Adobe, and I'd like to thank you for joining me today to hear all about the latest big update, which is the 2014 release of the Creative Cloud. I'm going to take you through some of the main pillars of this release and why they're so important to our creative community. I'm going to also show you some of the key new features within the CC desktop applications, and you're also going to hear about the new mobile applications as well as our new hardware. First, I'd like to talk a little bit about the key market shifts that are driving our creatives to work in new ways. First, there's the rapid pace of change in technology. Every day, our creatives are faced with new hardware, standards, cameras, formats, emerging technologies, and a whole lot more. The pace of innovation right now is staggering, and somehow our creatives need to be able to keep ahead of these changes. Creative people have always pushed the envelope, leveraging the latest and greatest innovations to solve their design problems. They push their own limits to give themselves a competitive edge. The next thing that we've witnessed is a massive explosion in mobile device usage. And this has changed expectations of how and what we create. Increasingly, we expect to be able to work from anywhere at any time on any device. It's no longer about mobile as a consumption device. Creatives now need to be able to do serious work on mobile devices. Clients, as well as the creatives themselves, expect to be able to be always on. So they never have to stop being creative, no matter where they are or what they're doing. And the third area of focus is around the super connected world that we now find ourselves in. Social has a major impact here, of course, and it's completely changed how we interact with others, collaborate, discover new content, get feedback, as well as sharing our experiences and work with others. As a result, we're collaborating differently, connecting differently, and disseminating content differently. Who we are, what we create, how we create, and even who inspires us have become essential ingredients in our professional creative identity. And creatives need to access their creative identity wherever they work. The 2014 release of the Creative Cloud is a huge step forward in enabling creatives to adapt to all of these things. To help creators keep up with the rapid pace of change, we're delivering a milestone release of our desktop applications. This includes all new versions of the 14 CC desktop applications with tightly integrated Creative Cloud services, as well as Lightroom and Edge Reflow. And to address the fact that creatives need to be always on and access everything that makes up their creative identity, we're introducing the new services layer that connects desktop, web and mobile. This means that your creative identity, or as we're calling it, your creative profile, is available to you wherever you work. The essential ingredients here are your assets, your colors, your fonts, even your community and your collaborators, and they'll be available to you everywhere. This release is about delighting our customers as well as improving their creative everyday workflow and keeping pace with these industry big shifts and changes. This is Adobe's biggest software update since CS6 released in spring 2012. There are many performance boosts. The enhanced Mercury performance in Photoshop CC with OpenCL performance means upsampling images is now three times faster. There are performance enhances for the top industry graphics architecture in Premiere Pro. GPU acceleration in Illustrator means five to 10 times faster rendering of vector graphics, as well as accelerated pan and zoom. Adobe Muse has been completely rebuilt as a 64-bit native application and now includes high DPI display support. There are loads of workflow efficiencies as part of this release as well. In Photoshop CC, you can now link smart objects and share them across multiple documents. You can also automatically package the links into a single directory in order to move them and share them easily. Live Shapes in Illustrator lets you quickly transform rectangles into complex shapes with a mix of rounded, inverted, or chamfered corners, and then return to the original rectangle with just a few clicks. Elements Quick View in Dreamweaver CC allows web developers to easily see, navigate, and modify the HTML structure of pages. New features in video apps include live text templates in Premiere Pro and After Effects CC, which gives you the ability to edit text in After Effects compositions without leaving Premiere Pro. And of course, we have support for changing hardware and formats. EPUB Fixed Layout in InDesign CC lets you easily create fixed layout digital books. Native HTML video support within Edge Animate allows the direct import of HTML5-friendly video clips. 
and support for Windows 8 touch devices like the new Microsoft Surface Pro 3 and Wacom tablets in Photoshop CC mean you can get even smoother strokes as well as pinch and zoom. And as always, we have thrown in just a little bit of Adobe Magic. The new blur motion effects in Photoshop CC creates a sense of motion even if not originally captured on camera. Focus Mask, also in Photoshop CC, lets you automatically select the in-focus or out-of-focus area within an image and create a mask. As well as being packed with all of these new features and many, many more, Adobe CC flagship desktop applications have also been tightly integrated with Creative Cloud services to extend their capabilities. Files can be synced, stored and shared via desktop computers and devices. Typekit enables creatives to find the perfect font. The digital publishing suite powers the delivery of content-rich mobile applications and publications. PhoneGap builds packages mobile apps in the cloud. Behance drives connections between over 3 million creatives worldwide via a vibrant creative community. Web hosting has online tools for website management. And Adobe Cooler helps creatives find color inspiration anywhere. This release is not just about desktop applications. It's about extending the desktop workflow to mobile and integrating that workflow through services. We started by asking ourselves the question, how should you create on mobile? And here's what we came up with. Creative apps should be tools, not toys. They should complement and extend how you work on the desktop. Your app should know you, bringing your colors, files, and past creations to your fingertips. And most importantly, perhaps, apps should be powerful enough for creatives to use, as well as being easy enough for anybody to use. And those are exactly the kind of apps we decided to create. These apps extend desktop workflows and have community and services built right in. All of these are Creative Cloud connected, meaning that you have access to your files, colors, and more, just as if you're working from your desktop. Adobe Sketch gives designers a creative connected process on the iPad bringing inspiration, drawing, and community feedback together in one place. Designers can find inspiration, explore ideas, and gather feedback from trusted peers from wherever they are and share their sketch work on Behance. Adobe Line recreates the art of drafting for the iPad, combining organic drawing with beautiful straight lines and perfect shapes that can be drawn in plan and elevation views or in perspective. Line can be used in conjunction with slide and reimagines conventional drawing tools like rulers, set squares, T-squares, and shape templates for the mobile world. It also gives creatives access to assets, cooler themes, and the ability to share their work. Adobe Photoshop Mix offers a new Creative Cloud connected mobile workflow, giving access to powerful digital imaging tools from the mobile device. It's fully compatible with Photoshop CC, so you can move seamlessly from mobile to desktop and continue creating. And as promised, these apps are really powerful enough for creatives to use and absolutely easy enough for anybody to pick up and start working with. Along with the new mobile apps, we're also introducing two new hardware products that connect the Creative Cloud to the Apple iPad. The pen, Adobe Ink, and the ruler, Adobe Slide, redefine creative hardware for our connected digital age. Adobe Ink is a beautiful three-sided aluminium stylus for the iPad. It enables controlled, expressive drawing and connects to the Creative Cloud. Ink gives users access to their assets, drawings, photos, Adobe Cooler color themes, and more at the tip of the pen. Built using the Adonit Pixel Point technology, the fine-tipped pressure-sensitive pen is lightweight and balanced for a comfortable grip. Adobe Slide, a three-inch companion to Ink, is a multifunctional digital ruler for the iPad. Slide enables precision sketching, straight lines, perfect circles, and balanced shapes. Adobe Ink and Slide will be available in the US at launch for $199 for the pair, and we expect them to ship to the UK later in 2014. And I'm sure, like us, you can't wait to have a go with them. All of this connectivity is brought together via the Creative Cloud in its services layer, which connects desktop, web, and mobile. By using services to integrate these workflows, creatives can access what they need whenever they need. Their creative profile, which is their creative identity, brings together assets, fonts, settings, tools, palettes, color themes, 
access to their community, collaborations, as well as learning content. And all of this they can access from wherever they want to work. Until now, this was all made available by the Creative Cloud desktop application. But we've extended this to Creative Cloud on the web. And we're introducing a new Creative Cloud iOS application. This allows Creative Cloud members to access and manage their files, assets, and more from their mobile devices. And as I've already mentioned, they can also access these things from the new Adobe mobile apps. All of this will help make their creative profile available to them wherever they work. In addition to this, we're also launching the Creative Cloud Market, a collection of high quality curated content. Members can download up to 500 unique royalty-free assets every single month and use them within Photoshop, Illustrator, or our other applications. This powerful new service will allow creatives to seamlessly find assets to build upon, manipulate, and modify to jumpstart their creative processes. So that's an overview of what's included in the offering. You have 40 new versions of the desktop applications, tightly integrated with Creative Cloud services. We have new mobile applications, tightly integrated again with the desktop applications through the Creative Cloud services. We have a Creative SDK for third-party development of apps, and we also have new Creative hardware. So let's take a look now at some of the key new features within the 2014 release of our desktop apps. We have more powerful smart objects within Photoshop. We have improved layer comps. We have the blur gallery motion effects. And we have focus mask and improved content aware technology. So let's take a quick look at a couple of those new Photoshop CC features in action. Here are the beginnings of a poster design for the music artist, Jesse Boykins. There's an image at the bottom right corner that I'd like to make some adjustments to and reduce the saturation of the background whilst leaving him unchanged. So let's take a look at the original image by jumping into the smart object. As you can see, this shot has been taken with really good depth of field. So the background is nicely out of focus while Jesse is sharp in the foreground. Now in the past, we would have had to take a considerable amount of time in selecting and masking the image in order to apply the filter to the background alone. But the new focus area tool really speeds this process up for us. I'm going to preview this in overlay mode to see the masked area clearly. As you can see, it's done a pretty good job of selecting Jesse as opposed to the background, but it's omitted some of his jackets. So let's just add that back into the selection. The next thing I need to quickly do is then correct the area around his hair with the refine edge option. So I'll just paint around the outside edge. And there we go. Now, if I select the inverse of this mask and apply a saturation adjustment layer, I can now easily reduce the saturation of the background, leaving him completely unchanged. So I'm sure you can see this is a hugely speeded up workflow. And there it is, instantly updated in the final artwork. I also have another music artist poster to add some finishing touches to. So let's take a look at that. The image I'm gonna work on first is of this reel-to-reel -reel player. And I want to add the illusion that this reel is spinning in the shot. And this is something that's really simple and effective to do with one of the new additions to the blur gallery. So let me apply the effect, which is the spin blur, and I'll resize it and position it to perfectly cover the top of the reel. I'm going to drag out the inner points of the widget on screen to reduce the feathering towards the outside edge. I'm also going to hold down the command key to reposition the center point, that's the point around which the spin will occur. The other thing I can do to give it an even more realistic sense that this was moving whilst the picture was taken is to add in a strobe effect. I'm gonna give it a strength of 75% and a frequency of four, and there we go. I'm only going to bother applying this effect to the right hand reel because that's actually all you can see in the final artwork. So let's take a look. There we go. Now I also want to apply a different type of movement to the guitar in this image. I'm going to use the second of the new additions to the blur gallery, which is the path blur. And I'm going to use this to give the impression that firstly his hand is strumming the guitar, and then I'm also going to add a kind of arc motion to the end of the guitar as if it's swinging up and down. So let's add the first path blur. 
and I'm going to move it to the center of his right hand and rotate it so it's going to be moving in the direction of motion. I'm going to set the starting point of the movement to be zero speed and the end point to be 300 pixels. And I can do this by using the slider or by using the on-screen widget with the edit blur shapes option enabled. I'm going to set a second path blur now in the center of the screen with both starting and finishing blur strengths to be zero. And this is going to prevent the blur that I've applied first off from affecting the right hand side of the picture. The third blur path I'm going to add is the arc shape that I mentioned around the end of the guitar. I'm going to set the starting speed of this to be zero and the finishing speed to be 500 pixels. And this time I'm also going to change the direction of that final speed by dragging in the handle to run parallel with his right hand and you can see the difference that makes to the blur. I'm also going to add some strobe effect to this image as well. There we go. So we're getting there but there's clearly some areas of the image that are being affected by these blur paths that I don't want to be but that's no problem at all. All I need to do to prevent that is to select the smart filter on the layer and then select the brush tool and then I can use this to create a mask to prevent those areas of the image from being affected by those blurs. So let's do that. And there we go. So that was the new focus selection tool and two new blur gallery features to really speed up your workflow and give you more creative control over your images within Photoshop CC. So now, in Illustrator CC, we have enhanced live shapes. We have the pen tool preview and anchor point enhancements, as well as CSS extraction and desktop font integration with Typekit. So let's take a quick look at the live shapes within Illustrator CC. I'm just gonna draw a simple shape in Illustrator. Let's draw a rectangle. And as you can see, I now have editable corners on these shapes. I can either change these corners using the corner icons on the shape itself, and I can do this all together or by selecting them individually. Or I can work using the newly enhanced properties panel where I can also change the type of corner as well as adding in exact radius values. The other thing I can do in this panel is to specify how the corners scale with the shape so they remain proportional to the size of the shape or remain fixed proportions as it's scaled. Then if I want to return to the original shape at any time, I can easily do this by resetting those values to zero. So that was the new live shape capabilities within Illustrator CC. Do check out all of the other new drawing enhancements that we have within this release. There's some really great stuff within there. Adobe Muse CC gets boosted performance thanks to its 64-bit native application rebuild. We also have in-browser editing updates. Creative Cloud add-ons, high DPI support, and a darker UI in line with the other creative applications. We have big updates for Flash CC Pro as well. There's SVG export, animation of variable width strokes, tweening for variable width strokes, motion editor, and WebGL for animation. So let's have a look at the variable width strokes and animation tweening in action. Here's a simple animation I've created of the Creative Cloud icon, which is morphing into a play button. And the triangular shape of the play button icon itself is actually created from a single stroke, which I've animated using the new variable width stroke tool. To work with this new tool, all you need to do is hover over a stroke with it selected, then just simply drag outwards or inwards the width markers that appear. If you hold down the Alt key while you're dragging a marker, it lets you edit just that one side of the stroke. And these animation points have then had a simple shape tween applied to them to make the transitions really smooth. So there you go, the new variable width stroke tool and tweening in Flash Pro CC. There's tons of other features in there, so make sure you take a look. There's some really great new features in InDesign CC for this release. Editing tables is vastly improved with new drag and drop functionality for rows and columns. We have the hotly awaited new EPUB fixed layout and we have seamless updates which will automatically bring over preference settings, appearances and workspaces. We also have swatch folders which enable you to select and organise different groups of swatches as well as share these with other applications such as Illustrator. We also have enhanced effects that will scale. 
So let's quickly jump into InDesign and I can show you how quick and easy it is now to move elements around within tables. Being able to drag and drop and move columns and rows around in tables means no more time consuming copying and pasting table elements to reorganize them. You just simply hover the mouse over the column or to the side of the row that you need to move and then drag it into its new position. A guide is going to appear to show you where the element will be placed so you can be really accurate about what you're doing. There we go. A great time saving update for InDesign CC. Adobe Edge Animate CC gets native HTML video support. We have sprite sheet import, article linking for use within Adobe DPS applications. We have a new and improved actions editor and we have the ability to copy and paste elements directly from Adobe Illustrator as an SVG. So let's now take a look at the sprite sheet import capabilities and the HTML5 video support within Edge Animate. Here are the early stages of the animated homepage for music artist Jesse Boykin's website. And I'm going to add to this some animated text by importing a sprite sheet into Edge Animate. Let's first take a look at the sprite sheet which was created using Flash Pro and then exported as a sprite sheet choosing the Edge Animate options. As you can see there are five columns and ten rows and it was exported with no padding or margins. All I need to do in Edge Animate to take advantage of the new sprite sheet import support is to select a new symbol in the library panel and then select the sprite sheet option. And now I simply add in the row and column details of 10 and 5 and also the padding and margin amounts in this case 0. I can preview the animation to make sure it all works as I've intended and that's looking fine and then click import. So let me just place this in the middle of the stage now and let's preview it in the browser. There we go, that's looking great. So as well as importing the sprite sheet, I also want to take advantage of the new HTML video support within Edge Animate. So let's this time select new video option from the library panel and I'll browse to the group of videos that I've created using Adobe Media Encoder CC. And this will ensure that it will all play correctly across the different platforms and devices that I need it to. I can now place this new video group onto the stage and I'll drag it to sit just below the play button that I'm going to use. And now let's take a look at another great enhancement to the Edge Animate 2014 release and that's the new actions panel. So if I now navigate to the video play button that I need to add some actions to, there we go, I'll select the button and add an action of mouse click. And then I'll select the video actions and choose play. I can now browse to the video that I want to associate this button with and there you go, let's choose that one. And there you have it, all the code is created for me, super simple, really really clear and easy to use. The final thing I'll do is to set the cursor to display as a pointy finger on mouse hover and that's to show that it's a clickable item. There we go. And now let's take a look at this in action in the browser. Great. So there we are. The brand new sprite sheet import, HTML video support and the enhanced actions panel within Edge Animate CC. There are some fantastic new features within Adobe Premiere Pro CC, many of which really go into speeding up your workflow and creativity. We have live text templates, which enables you to edit text within After Effects compositions embedded within your project without ever leaving Premiere Pro. We have masking and tracking, again some powerful new features from After Effects brought directly in to sit within Premiere Pro. We have master clip effects which enable you to apply an effect once to a clip that's been used in multiple places across your timeline, again super time saving stuff. And we have enhanced graphics performance in the Adobe Mercury playback engine. All of this and many new features leading to a faster editing workflow. So let's now see those live text templates in action as well as the masking and tracking tool. There's a great new feature within Premiere Pro CC which gives you the ability to edit text within After Effects compositions without leaving Premiere Pro. And all I need to do within After Effects when I create this template is just to make sure that it's enabled to be edited within Premiere Pro and I do this from the properties panel here so let's just select that. So here's the After Effects composition sitting within the timeline in Premiere Pro and I'm just going to double click on it from within the project panel to load it into the source monitor and that enables me to then select the effects tab and access this live text editable area. 
And there we go. I can easily change this text and update it. I haven't had to go into a complicated After Effects composition that I may not be familiar with. I can do it all safely and easily within the environment I'm used to working with super quickly within Premiere Pro. So the next thing I'm going to do is to show you the mask tracking tool, which is also harnessing some powerful After Effects functionality from directly within Premiere Pro. I need to disguise the identity of this man in the shot, and I'd like to blur out his face throughout the clip as both he and the camera move around. Now, I can do this really easily with the new mask tracking options from within any of my Premiere Pro video effects. In this case, I'm going to choose the Gaussian blur, so let's apply that. But rather than apply it across the entire frame, what I need to do is to apply an ellipse mask. So let's do that. And I'm going to place it over his face at the start of the clip. I could actually do this from the endpoint instead if it was an easier place to begin that tracking from. And I would just render it in reverse. I've got those options from within the tool itself. I'm going to resize it and add some feathering around the edge. And let's increase the blur amount. There we go. And now all I need to do to make the mask track the position across the entire clip is to start the tracker. This is automatically going to be adding keyframes wherever it needs to, to resize and reposition the mask throughout the clip. Brilliant. So that was the new After Effects powered live text templates and mask tracking tool within Premiere Pro CC. There are tons more features in all of these applications and those that I haven't had a chance to mention in this session. So do check out all of those. So thank you for joining me for this update and overview of the 2014 release of the Creative Cloud. I hope you've seen loads of stuff in there that you're going to find useful, that's going to inspire you to use creatively to improve your workflows. If you'd like me to keep you updated as to when I release new content via my website, which is creativesneaks.com, you can connect via Twitter, at Creative Sneaks, or via Facebook, that's forward slash Creative Sneak, you should also check out, of course, the videos on Adobe TV as well as the Adobe UK YouTube channel because there are just tons and tons of new things within this release. Lots of great tutorials on there. Lots of things within the Creative Cloud account. Of course, you've got that massive tutorial area all built specifically for you to really keep on top of these new features and start integrating them within your workflows as soon as possible. Do check out the new mobile applications and of course keep an eye out for that new hardware that's on its way to the UK very soon. Thanks again for joining me, I hope to see you soon.